I was like eight years old and then a lady was just like, you can leave, we don't have your size. And she was like, your nose is too flat. And so she was like, you know, if you want to have surgery, you can like do a nose job. There would be times when I'm opening gifts on holidays and I'd be really excited to maybe receive snacks or like toys or just gadgets, you know, as a little kid, but instead receiving like skin whitening products or double eyelid tape or like little gadgets that you can use to make your double chin go away. This is maybe not a good action on camera. Um, like as an eight year old girl, like that, that's not something you wanna be receiving or like let alone play with. I remember my grandma would come every round, like every day, and she would like pinch my nose, like literally pinch my nose. And I would be like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And she was like, your nose is too flat. I'm like trying to help you get like a nose bridge. I would say for me, like the main focus has been like from my family and friends growing up. It was all around the shape of my eyes and like the lack of like prominent, um, thick, double eyelid. But I remember like before going out, like strategically, you know, doing my eye makeup and like placing my eyelashes because I kind of wanted to like fit in with how everyone else looked. Skin is also like a big, big thing. Like my family is always trying to wear hats. They bring a lot of like umbrellas when we go to the beach. Like there's no such thing as like being tan in my family. The They're visors. Like, right? Yeah, the oh, visors, the Asian visors. The Asian visor. We call it like the Japanese like geisha look almost. Like it's like pale white, but like the whiter and the paler you are as an Asian American, it's like almost like a plus plus. As a South Indian, so I'm Tamilian, and it's even bigger of like a thing. I noticed it when I lived in India for the last three years. There's a phrase that they would use in, in Tamil, and they would say, which means, it literally translates to, look how black you've become. And I was like, really? Like, I don't know any different. <laughs> right, right. We have a similar one. Oh yeah? Oh, me think that she was like, you got darker. Yeah, yeah, no, anybody who'd visit me, especially from here, if they weren't seeing me for a long time, yeah. like my grandmother would say, and she'd be like, you look at the perka, you've become so black. And I was like, oh, I feel, yeah. you know. Um, so my, my mom never laid it on me, but a big one in India is um, fair and lovely. It's laser light. It gives glowing fairness. So from now, only fairness like laser light treatment. The beauty standards for Filipinos are usually mestizo, which is like, a Filipino that's like mixed with uh, like European features or specifically Spain because you know like colonization. And then the next one is uh, Chinita or Chinito which is basically like Filipinos that have more East Asian features so petite, lighter skin, mm. smaller face. <laughs> my mom once asked me if I wanted those jobs. No, really? <laughs> oh my yeah. god. And then uh, yeah, it was just, I just didn't feel, I just didn't feel attractive, like, growing up. And what was your response to that? Like, I would love to know, like, like, when she asked you, were you? I was like, well, to you? be fair to my mom, there's nothing wrong with plastic surgery. Right, right. Oh, that was around the time that she was going to have a boob job. And so she was like, uh, you know, if you want to have surgery, you can, like, do a nose job. And I was just like, she's like, I'll, that can be my gift or oh, whatever. Dang. I was like, no, it's okay, mom. Oh, my God. In India, there's a big, at least from what I've felt over the last couple of years living there, skinny shaming is a big thing. The whole idea is like if you're too skinny, like you won't be looked at as fertile is, is one thing. Like that's a big thing. And then also it's like economic status. So mm -hmm. it's almost because I think because poverty is so in your face and in a lot of areas, it's almost like, oh, well, if you're super skinny, you obviously can't afford to live a decent life. You know what I mean? One time when I was like really, really young, I went to Taiwan and I walked into a clothing store and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, I was like eight years old and then a lady was just like, you can leave, we don't have your size. I'm like an eight year old girl. And like, it's weird because at that time as a little girl, you're just like happy and carefree. And for someone to say something so hurtful like that, it sucks. I'm still considered like large for an Asian person, but in, Asian America, I'm totally acceptable in like an Asian American community and I still feel confident in myself. I can laugh about it now, but it's really hard because I can't change my appearance. I know that a lot of people go through what I'm going through. A lot of these things sort of stay with you like as you grow up. And I think now as like, you know, as adults, like we sort of like own it and we embrace it and we're like more confident. 
I think it's unrealistic for me to try to be somebody that I'm not. I'm brown and I'm happy about my heritage. I'm happy about the way I look. 